Hello, and welcome to another edition of Your Bridge to Addiction Resources, a program that is hosted and sponsored by the Council on Chemical Abuse. My name is Yvonne Stroman. I am the Community Program Specialist, and we are here to talk about the Underage Drinking Program. With me next to me is Sonia Santiago. And Sonia, welcome. Thank you. How are Thank you? Thank you for having me. I'm doing good. Good. Yeah, and thanks. can you share with us what your title is at the Council on Chemical Abuse and what you do? Sure. Um, my, uh, my title is a Certified Prevention Specialist, and I've been working at the Council for, in February, it's actually 11 years. Great. So. Great. And so with uh, the Certified Prevention Specialist, that's a whole myriad of things. Um, and you are working in the community as well as in the schools? Absolutely, yes. Currently, I'm working at schools. I just finished with Daniel, with I'm sorry, Boyertown, and I'm uh, with uh, Daniel Boone now. And then after that's finished, then I'll be in uh, several middle schools or elementary schools. Okay. Yeah, so. and, and, and it's prevention-related material, evidence-based curriculum that you're facilitating? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, but prior to that, um, you were also the coordinator yes. for the Underage Drinking Program. Yes, I was. Can you talk a little bit about what that coordination meant, um, working with parents, students, schools? What, what did all that entail? Well, it, it entailed working with kids that are drinking under the age of 21, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and basically what, tends to, what happens is we get referrals in from all the magistrate offices mm -hmm. when their kids have been caught either drinking alcohol and sometimes, you know, smoking marijuana as well okay. or in possession of. So, um, so then once the referral comes into our office, then I start the process of, you know, sending out letters and um, Making, uh, making sure that they follow up and, and scheduling their classes. Okay, so the letter goes to the parent um, and then the parent is uh, contacted and, and, and told about the underage drinking program. What, I'm just curious, what are some of the responses that you got by, from parents when you made that call or reached out through letters? When I, when I, I typically mail out letters. Okay. And, um, and I do get I get I do get some parents that are they're understanding, but then you get those parents that well, you know, my son or daughter wasn't doing it. They were just with a group of other kids, and um, you know it is what it is. You know, unfortunately, they got caught. They were either with the group, they were doing it. Nonetheless, they were caught. So unfortunately, they have to pay the price and, and attend 12-hour um, sessions of educational classes. Mm -hmm. Um, when if they're caught under the age of 17 and younger, there is a parent piece that's included as well. Okay, parents have to come in for an orientation. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. How long is that orientation? It takes two hours, and okay. it's usually you know scheduled in the evening, of course, because you have parents at work. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And and they're basically given an overview of what happens during the uh, educational piece, the the 12-hour educational piece. Exactly, and they talk about you know. Um, the facilitators usually uh, work the classes differently. They usually facilitate differently. But mm -hmm. one of that, you know, that I can think of is that um, they ask the students in the class of what drugs that they've been using, so that they can then take that information to the parents, and they can share that information with the parents, so that they're aware that you know what what they're using and what they're doing mm -hmm. to give them you know a really realistic approach of what's going on with their child. So is it safe to say that though the student might have been cited for underage drinking, there might have been some other drugs that were also uh, in play uh, as it relates to their use? Absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. Drugs like marijuana, Ma marijuana, I'm marijuana would be the one that's, you know, usually mm -hmm. the one, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so um, is the education the, more of a informational awareness matter? Um, it, it is both. They talk about, you know, um, the actual program and they also give information, uh, parenting, you know, tools that they can use to make the parents aware what to look for. Okay. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe something that they can, you know, look to the future if this would occur again, what are the stipulations, what are the, you know, because mm -hmm. it's, it is a one-time uh, program so that if they do get caught a second time, the underage drinking program would not be an option at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and um, the youth that are participating, um, what has been kind of their response to 
the, uh, to the underage drinking program. I know that they don't come in happy, happy, joy, joy, <laughs> but, but um, are they open to the information? Um, are they saying, you know, being dismissive, saying, well, that it only happened once, and so I don't have a problem? Right. You have a, a range of all, you know, uh, ideas or uh, what they feel at that moment. But I can tell you that by the end of the third class, their classes are divided into four hour sessions on a Saturday. So there are three a month. But by the third Saturday, what I have noticed is that there's most, well, I shouldn't say most, but some are very much appreciative of the information and they really have learned a lot. That's great. Yeah. That's great. They, uh, yeah. And so, because, you know, along with the attendance to the education awareness program, uh, there are other monetary fees um, that are associated with this. They have to pay for the program, correct? Uh, yes. The program is $65, mm -hmm. um, and it covers both the 12-hour educational piece plus the parent session as well. Okay. Yeah. And, and is there any other um, uh, consequence as it relates to this? Um, is there, to your knowledge, any court fees, because they have to go before district magistrate? Um, is there suspension of their driver's license if they have one? Do you know anything? Yes, yes, the, yes, some do have their licenses suspended, and some do other have additional fees. Okay. But that, those fees obviously come from, you know, from the courts. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're two different entities, yeah. but yes. So I guess my point that I'm making is, is underage drinking, um, can be expensive. Oh, absolutely. It, it, it does cost. And so, um, you know, one of the conversations that you and I had was in terms of the perception uh, in our community sometimes is we kind of hone in on what's happening. And right now the heroin epidemic is right. happening. Right. But we can't dismiss that young people are involved and engaged in unhealthy behaviors and underage drinking is one of those unhealthy behaviors. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's the, the part that bothers me the most is the fact that I know working in the community and in the schools mm -hmm. that in the Reading School District, you know, is that it does happen. But unfortunately, I don't see a lot of referrals or I didn't see when I was the coordinator. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of coming out of, you know, the suburbs, why I'm missing and, and Kutztown areas. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that it does occur. Yeah. yeah. All around. yeah. Well, and, and the other piece of that is I'm assuming in that education uh, that they come to is addressing the attitude about alcohol. Right. Because it is uh, legal for those that are over the age of 21. Right. But if I'm coming from a family where alcohol is readily available, and mm -hmm. maybe even my aunt or uncle, you know, gave me alcohol at one point in time. Sure. Um, so we work through kind of addressing some of those attitudes regarding alcohol. Oh, absolutely. And that's, that's, a, that's another issue too that is, you know, they think it's socially acceptable because of, you know, the drinking at, you know, parties mm -hmm. and, you know, and other cultural rituals, you know, so they think it's, it's okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mentality. Right, right. And so the, the opportunity though is that, um, that education and awareness I think is a critical piece and I appreciate yeah. Um, the role that you have in our community mm -hmm. as a certified prevention specialist of saying, you know, if we can start um, doing more efforts in the prevention, mm -hmm. um, perhaps the underage drinking program would not have as many ref referrals. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, and is there anything that you really kind of wish to resonate for Berks County residents to know about uh, as it relates to this program? Uh, the underage drinking program? Uh, I think, you know, education is so important, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it goes to say, even with parents as well, parents just do, they need to get involved in, in their schools to find out, you know, exactly what's going on mm -hmm. and, and just become, you know, proactive. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and I'm appreciative of the schools also mm -hmm. just kind of um, opening its doors mm -hmm. to having a certified prevention specialist come in and really kind of share with young people about uh, information, raising awareness, um, because, you know, the more that we can put out on the front end, mm -hmm. um, the less we then need to pay in terms of 
jails oh, and, and uh, you know increase hospital care costs and those kind of things absolutely. so um, I really appreciate yeah. you speaking with me this morning about Thank this you. and um, again if you would like more information about the Council on Chemical Abuse we encourage you to visit our website at www.cocaberks that's c-o-c-a-b-e-r-k-s Dot org. And this has been another edition of Your Bridge to Addiction Resources. And we thank you for joining us and have a great day. Check back every week for a new story with Your Bridge to Addiction Resources. You can call 610-376-8669 or visit online at cocaberks.org. C-O-C-A-B-E-R-K-S.org. Be sure to like and follow the Council on Chemical Abuse on Facebook and Twitter.